Um, okay, I've got uh, probably six minutes and then Jess is going to wave that thing at me. Um, so what the heck is a Dodo Roadshow? Um, in June 2015, about 11 members of uh, staff from the Museum of Natural History embarked on a mildly ridiculous journey, really, from Land's End to John O'Groats, uh, carrying an iconic piece of uh, natural history heritage, uh, which was the Oxford Dodo. And during this eight-day trip um, from one end of the country to the other, these people visited 24 uh, museums and galleries and introduced the dodo to over a 1,000 people. Um, and they learned about many other important pieces of uh, cultural and natural heritage along the way. So this, this campaign, if you like, was executed and organised from scratch in about three weeks. Um, it was quite a complex and ambitious thing to do. It involved heart-poundingly tight driving schedules. Um, it uh, involved liaisons with many different people in different places all over the country, uh, hotels, photographs, on-the-road blog writing, dinners, lunches, and many other uh, unexpected turns of event. So why did we do this? Why on earth would you subject yourself to that? So about a year and a half ago now, uh, the museum was nominated as a finalist in the Art Fund Prize for <coughs> Museum of the Year, uh, and as one, uh, one of only six finalists with some quite prestigious company. Um, this was quite a big deal for us, obviously. Um, and we wanted to mark that in some way, to celebrate that in some way. Uh, so we were trying to come up with an idea, and the clincher came from our director, Paul, really, I think, who said, well, the campaign to celebrate our nomination ought to take us the full length of the country on this iconic tip-to-tip uh, -tip trip from Land's End to John O'Groats. And, um, which is, a, as I say, is a sort of ridiculous idea, but also an irresistible suggestion once it's been put on the table. Um, not least because at the same time, the uh, National Museum Directors' Council were about to embark on a national campaign called I Love Museums, um, uh, and so we thought we could, we could tie into that as well. So what was the idea? Okay. Um, so instead of just celebrating our own success, we, we thought we'd take this I Love Museums idea and celebrate the richness and variety of collections uh, across Britain. And the vehicle for that became the Dodo. Um, it was the sort of the figurehead of the campaign, if you like, and it was the Dodo's job to meet all these other objects uh, and locations uh, on the tour. And what happened? Well, while we're on the road, there he is. <laughs> Charismatic. Um, so the first, we have these kind of roadies who manage this, this, this road show. The first cohort of roadies set forth for Land's End, and their cargo in the museum van was, was the uh, Dodo model. Da -da -da. Uh, a cast of the precious Oxford Dodo head, which, uh, as many of you will probably know, is, it represents the only soft tissue remains of a dodo uh, anywhere. Uh, and then we had real foot bones from that same animal, um, which are, are, again, some of the few organic pieces of dodo remains um, uh, in collections. And these three teams broke the country into regions. So we had, um, we had the southwest to Wales, Wales to the northwest, and then the northwest through up to Scotland. Um, and actually, fittingly, as the van pulled back into the museum uh, just over a week later, and about 2,300 miles later, it sort of limped in with a flat tyre <laughs> on, uh, on one of the tyres. So, uh, yeah, it took its toll. What did we do? So, each venue, um, we would photograph the dodo with the object that we'd gone to meet in that venue. In this case, it was a Joseph Wright of Derby painting in the Derby Museum. And then we'd spend about an hour meeting visitors to that museum or that place, and we'd show them the dodo remains, we'd let them ask questions, handle the foot bones, uh, and then also hear a little bit about the roadshow and what it was we were doing. Um, at the same time, as this trip was unfolding on the road and in the van, uh, it had to play out online sort of simultaneously. So there were tweets, there were blog posts, there were cartoons written by, drawn by Chris Jarvis, who's here, our resident cartoonist. Um, so logistically, it was quite challenging getting all of these elements to to click together as we went along. Um, and before we set off, we really had no idea how this would go. It was dreamed up in incredibly fast time, as I say, and then we were doing it before we realised what we decided to do. Um, but for the most part, it was, it was really enthusiastically received, not only by um, visitors, but by other museum staff and everyone who hosted us. Um, so to give you a flavour of what it was like while we were doing the tour, I did the middle bit, which was uh, the um, Midlands to Northwest. Um, so in Derby, where this was taken, we were invited to the local BBC radio breakfast show um, to do an interview, and we took the dodo into the studio, of course. Um, at the Robert Burns Museum, a large group broke out into a, 
uh, spontaneous rendition of Auld Lang Syne beside a fragment of Burns' original manuscript, uh, which is quite special. Uh, I think Paul was there for that. Um, in Aviemore in Scotland, some people uh, made a five-hour round trip to come and see the dodo. And in Ullapool, every primary school child within 50 miles came to see it as well. And there were some nice little exchanges that we had with objects as well. So, for example, at the Black Country Living Museum, the, the, their steam hammer object remarks rather poignantly, like you, Mr Dodo, I'm the last of my kind. Which I thought was a, a, a nice exchange of, of cultural um, heritage. Was it worth it? Um, so money is only one measure of, of, it, of, of expenditure, uh, and there's some other sort of figures of, of what we achieved on the screen there. But in terms of money, it was extremely good value. So the whole trip, including marketing materials, accommodation, transport, and food, was, uh, the budget for that was £3,600. And from that, we effectively mounted a mini national campaign. Um, we engaged with the museum sector across the country, and we delivered a pop-up interpretation programme centred on the Oxford Dodo. So in that sense, the roadshow benefited us at the museum, but also the participants, because they were celebrating their own objects, and the wider sector as well, which dovetailed really nicely with the NMDC Isle of Museums campaign. And in fact, uh, the NMDC uh, cited the Dodo Roadshow in a document to the DCMS, a document called Museums Matter. Uh, they cited it as an example of how the UK creates, quote, some of the most successful and ambitious temporary exhibitions in the world. That wasn't really a temporary exhibition, but nonetheless, we'll take that. Um, but, and then, then some other benefits uh, in terms of uh, uh, the interactions and things online as well. But perhaps as importantly and of more relevance to everyone in the room here today, the experience of doing that was it was a really galvanising short period of time for staff and it involved staff from across the museum. It wasn't just public engagement, it wasn't just the, the executive group, it was people from, from across the museum became involved in that. And it was a really intense but creative period, which turned a germ of an idea into something, you know, quite fun and also uh, reasonably high impact for us to talk about. Um, and so, well, I suppose what I'm going to suggest to you is that whilst I wouldn't recommend you subjecting yourself to those kinds of deadlines on a regular basis, maybe every now and then putting yourself in the pressure cooker of having to do something perhaps self-imposed in a short period period of time, get it out on the road, as it were, or get it done, might uh, allow some crazy ideas to slip through that if you were more cool-headed and more thoughtful, you'd probably throw in the bin. <laughs> I'll leave you with that.